Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Tibet County Library, and this is our second weekly Library Connections video cast. This video cast is being recorded on Thursday, May 21st, 2020. Enjoy. So as usual, we're going to kick off with the top five New York Times bestsellers of the week. Number one, Camino Wins by John Grisham. The line between fact and fiction becomes blurred when an author of thrillers is found dead after a hurricane hits Camino Island. Number two, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delilah Owens. In a quiet town on the North Carolina coast in 1969, a young woman who survived alone in the marsh becomes a murder suspect. Number three, Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ney. An artist upends a quiet town outside Cleveland. Number four, If It Bleeds by Stephen King. The master of horror presents four novellas, Mr. Harrigan's Phone, The Life of Chuck, Rat, and the title story, If It Bleeds. And number five is our lone new edition this week, Walk the Wire by David Baldacci. The sixth book in the Memory Man series, Decker and Jameson investigate a murder in a North Dakota town during a fracking boom. Moving on to the nonfiction top five of the week. Number one, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. The activist and public speaker describes her journey of listening to her inner voice. Number two, Becoming by Michelle Obama. The former first lady describes how she balanced work, family, and her husband's political ascent. That sounds like quite the juggling act. Number three, The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson, an examination of the leadership of the Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and this is set during the World War II era. Number four, Educated by Tara Westover. The daughter of survivalist, who is kept out of school, educates herself enough to leave home for university. Good for her. And number five, and this is our lone new nonfiction title in the top five, The Great Influenza by John M. Barry. An overview of the 1918 flu epidemic and cautionary tale for similar kinds of large scale outbreaks. Well, it's no mystery why that's on the bestseller list right now. And just a brief note, it is not unusual at all to have the top five feature most of the same titles for a number of weeks in a row. And then boom, all of a sudden we'll have three or four or even five new titles in the top five. But not this week, just the two new titles. So moving on to the critically acclaimed books of the week. And this week I'm going to recommend two. The first one is called The Price of Peace, Money, Democracy, and the Life of John Maynard Keynes, written by Zachary D. Carter. And this quote is from the Booklist Starred Review. Although British economist Keynes is mostly remembered for the theory that bears his name, in his first book, journalist Carter reveals that his ideas have far more to offer today's world of rickety economies and creeping authoritarianisms, or authoritarianism. In this sweeping intellectual biography, Carter traces Keene's career from his first forays into public policy during World War I through the bumpy 1920s and the Great Depression to its end in the behind-the-scenes negotiations of World War II. He vividly describes Keynes' world, which encompassed both European realpolitik and the Bloomsbury Group, and illustrates how his academic, cultural, and political activities influenced his ideas. Carter's timely study is highly recommended. So if you like nonfiction, 
and biographies. And if you have an interest in the history of economics in the West, this is a good book for you. The second critically acclaimed book of the week is fiction. This one is called The Ghosts of Harvard by Francesca Ciratella. And I'm going to start out with a brief quote by the author Jody Picoult. She really liked the book, by the way. She says, every time I thought I knew where Ghosts of Harvard was heading, I turned out to be wrong. Part mystery, part ghost story, part psychological thriller, this novel is all entertainment. Sounds entertaining. And now a brief synopsis of the plot. Katie Archer arrives as a new student at Harvard, the school her brother Eric attended the year before and the place where her brilliant brother, Eric, developed schizophrenia and took his own life. While Katie determinedly struggles to keep up with her academic work, she is equally determined to uncover what really happened to her brother while he was at Harvard. Her initial clues are few and include a blue notebook full of Eric's mysterious notes. As she continues her investigation, Katie, like her brother before her, starts to hear voices. And the voices seem to belong to ghosts that resided at Harvard more than two centuries before. Is Katie too developing schizophrenia? Or is something else going on? And what really happened to her brother, Eric? That one sounds intriguing too. So many books, so little time, but more time at the moment. And moving right along, to our streaming video suggestions for the week. I've got three of them. First one is a TV series available on Netflix. It's called Dark, D-A-R-K. There are two seasons with a third on the way. Dark is set in a small town in Germany and follows several interconnected families. It features both a lead character and an ensemble cast. When the series opens, high school student Jonas has just returned to school after taking time off in the aftermath of his father's unexplained suicide. Jonas is seen on his first day back at school with his friends Bartas and siblings Martha and Magnus. They are discussing where they think a missing student stored his stash of marijuana in the forest near a cave. And the teens agree to get together that night and go looking for the stash. So the group meets in the woods that evening near the cave. And when siblings Martha and Magnus arrive, they are accompanied by their younger brother, Mikkel. And as they're pawing through a old floppy chair that's been left there, which is where the stash of marijuana is, all of a sudden there's a big, loud, strange sound that comes echoing out of the cave and it startles everyone. It's a really spooky sound. Then the noise sounds again and everyone runs. They all flee. And in the aftermath, everyone is accounted for except Mikkel. And I won't say any more about the plot except for the fact that the show does have a supernatural spin to it. And what happens to Mikkel is one of the mysteries of the secret filled town of Wyndham, but not the only one by far. And sorry about the text message that just came in from a coworker. I'll look at that after I finish recording this. I've got two more streaming suggestions. The second is on PBS, and you can access it also on the PBS website on demand. It's the second season of the nature series Spies in the Wild, and it features robotic spies engaging with and recording video of their interactions with polar animals, including polar bears, elephant seals, and penguins. And my third and final streaming recommendation for this week is the 2010 film The Social Network, which is currently showing on Netflix. The rise and rise and rise of the Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg is loosely dramatized in this fleet, weirdly funny, exhilarating, alarming, and fictionalized drama from the director David Filcher and the screenwriter Aaron Sorkin jettisoning the conventions of biodrama and tech expose, Fincher and Sorkin construct something akin to a 21st century citizen Kane, the haunting story of a media mogul 
who finds that all his riches and all his power cannot fill the hole in his soul. And that's from the New York Times Review. So our audiobook recommendations of the week, and I've got two. First one is nonfiction. It's called 24, Life Stories and Lessons from the Say Hey Kid, written by Willie Mays and read by Larry Heron and Julian McWilliams. Widely regarded as the greatest all-round player in baseball history because of his unparalleled hitting, defense, and base running, the beloved Willie Mays offers people of all ages his lifetime of experience, meeting challenges with positivity, integrity, and triumph in 24 life stories and lessons from the Say Hey Kid. And the review also featured a brief quote by Willie Mays, which I think sums up what the book's about in his own words. So I'm going to read it. Willie says, I was very lucky when I was a child. My family took care of me and made sure I was in early at night. I didn't get in trouble. My father made sure that I didn't do the wrong thing. I've always had a special place in my heart for children and their well-being. And John Shea and I got the idea that we should do something for the kids and the fathers and the mothers. And that's why this book is being published. We want to reach out to all generations and backgrounds. Hopefully, these stories and lessons will inspire people in a positive way. What a lovely idea. And moving right along to the next one. The second suggestion is an audio book uh, that's a novel. This one's called All Adults Here, written by Emma Straub and read by Emily Rankin. When a strict, strict witnesses a school bus accident in the center of town, it jostles loose a repressed memory from her young parenting days, decades earlier. Suddenly, Estrid realizes she was not quite the parent she thought she'd been to her three now grown children. But to what consequence? Astrid's youngest son is drifting and unfocused, making parenting mistakes of his own. Her daughter is pregnant, yet struggling to give up her own adolescence. And her eldest seems to measure his adult life according to standards no one else shares. But who gets to decide, so many years later, which long ago lapses were the ones that mattered? Who decides? Which apologies really count? It might be that only Estrid's 13-year-old granddaughter and her new friend really understand the courage it takes to tell the truth to the people you love the most. Both those uh, titles are recommended by Audiophile Magazine. Both sound excellent. And moving along to our Odd Duck recommendations of the week. Our first Odd Duck recommendation well, let me start out with this. There are three Odd Duck recommendations this week, two on the joys of cooking and eating with your nuclear family, and a third on the benefits of walking. Just make sure to splash in the puddles when walking in the rain. I always loved to do that as a kid. Occasionally, I still do it as an adult. So my first suggestion is both a website and an app that I found when doing research for this video cast. It's called the BBC Good Food homepage. And it is just that it's put out by the people that do the British baking show. So if you are if you are a cook and you love to cook and you aren't familiar with the site, you might check it out. They have some delicious recipes like chicken and sweet corn tacos. Oof. They also have a ton of recipe categories, family and kids, cocktails and drinks, quick and easy, healthy every day, even occasions, which include afternoon tea the next slide there we go afternoon tea recipes quick and easy recipes collection of them and then cakes and baking recipes so a whole lot of recipes for anyone looking for something new to cook and as i mentioned there is indeed an app for that it looks like this bbc good food put out by the intermediate media company limited so you can have it on your smartphone or tablet and here's a couple of screenshots from the app. So if you're sitting on the couch at night and you have this app on your phone, you can quickly look up 
your recipe with chickpeas and tomato and find that uh, there's a delicious dish you can make for lunch tomorrow. And on a final food note, I'm going to recommend a podcast episode. It's called Cooking During COVID-19. It's from NPR's Fresh Air podcast series. And here's a brief description. Sam Sifton, former New York Times food editor, has a new cookbook out with the now somewhat ironic title of See You on Sunday. The book was published in February before the coronavirus caused most of us to shelter in place. The book focuses on the benefits of the connections we make with other household members when we take the time and effort into preparing a meal together and then sitting down to eat that meal together. A situation that was much less common in the recent pre-coronavirus America than it once was when our parents and grandparents were growing up. Sam was interviewed by Dave Davies for Fresh Air on April 7th, and the 34-minute listen can be accessed through the NPR site. You can do a quick Google search for cooking during COVID-19 and Fresh Air, or you can find Fresh Air in your podcast app. And I'm going to talk a little bit about In Praise of Walking. This is a book and also just a suggestion because for those who are single like me, cooking for other family members doesn't really work. I live with three cats and I do a minimum of cooking for the kitties. So here's a little tip for those of us who can't enjoy getting together with other family members living in our homes since we don't have any. The basic idea is that walking outdoors is good for you. And to add support to that idea, here's a quote from Irish neuroscientist Shane O'Mara. Walking can allow you to escape yourself, and this non-ego focus is healthy. We should spend more time not thinking of ourselves. O'Mara has even authored a book on the subject called, obviously, In Praise of Walking. It's available in the digital catalog if you'd like to know more on the subject, and the book cover is seen at left. Here are cute cat photos of the week. And for once, you're gonna see all three of, the, of my babies. Jules is seen on the top, I'm gonna to go clockwise, top left-hand corner, that's Jules. He's assisting me in working. To the right of Jules is Piper, lounging on my favorite Afghan, the blue one my mother made me. And as you can see from the third photo in the bottom right-hand corner, Every cat in this house likes that box that I got for Jules. This particular photo is actually of Winston, if you look closely, and not Jules. Winston's decided he wants to sit in Jules' box. And then the final photo, also with that lovely blue blanket that my mother made me, that the cats like too, features Winston in the foreground and Jules in the background. And boy, those cats, they sure know how to relax. So those are the cute cat photos for the week. And if you have a question about this weekly video cast or anything else library related, feel free to send me an email, rhymerl at stls.org, and I will get back to you. Library resources you can access from home. I'm not going to read these. If you wish to you know, write something down, feel free to pause the video at this point. Social media, just a reminder, you can connect with the library through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. And here are our references. At the very end here, in just a second, you'll see the tech tip of the week. Hi, everyone. This is the tech tip of the week. And I'm going to briefly talk about how you download the Libby app to your mobile device. I'm using an iPhone 10 for this video. However, the process is similar if you have an Android device either a phone or a tablet, you would just go to the Google Play Store and look for the Libby app. So without further ado, I'm going to tap on the App Store icon and that's going to open. And then you should find a search box near the top of the screen. Under the big word search there, it's, there's a little Sherlock Holmes spyglass and it says games, apps, stories, and more. You should be able just to tap in the search box. Now, if you don't see a search box, but you do see it, a Sherlock Holmes spyglass, like the one you also see in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you could tap that. Either way, you're going to search, so you tap the box, and then you type in Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. 
and with internet searches and iPhone searches and just plain searches online for information, it's usually best to be more general. In other words, use a short term. You'll see that some of the search results come up. It says Libby, Libby by Overdrive, Libby app, Libby library. We're just going to play and go with Libby because that's going to give us the best shot of getting exactly what we need. So since that's what I've got typed up there, I can either tap search in the bottom right hand corner or just tap the text that says Libby. And lo and behold, our first search result is the correct one, the Libby by Overdrive app. Overdrive is the name of the company, the platform vendor, if you will, that provides the Southern Tier Library System and its member libraries with access to ebooks and downloadable audiobooks. And if you're using an Android device, you want to note the little icon there, the maroon square with the picture of the girl reading a book with her little, you know, hair. I don't want to say tag, it's not hair, it's a hair ribbon sticking up. That's the icon you want to look for. You'll notice on my screen it says Libby by Overdrive, Library, Ebooks, and Audiobooks. And just to the right of the word audiobooks, there's a picture of a cloud with an arrow pointing down. And what that means is I have downloaded this app to a previous mobile device. Now if you've never downloaded the Libby app to any device before, it's going to say buy or get or possibly download in that area. But that's where you're going to tap to actually download the app. So I'm going to tap that icon and it's going to zoom around and then say open, which means the app has been installed. So I'm going to tap open. This also means that there now will be a little icon on your home screen that features the little girl with the hair ribbon. And you'll notice here on the screen it says, Welcome, thousands of public libraries offer ebooks and audiobooks for free in Libby. Let me ask you a few questions to guide you to your library. First question is, do you have a library card? And you do have to have a library card to use Libby. If you don't, then contact the library and we'll get you set up with one. So we're going to tap yes. First question, do you have a library card? Yes. And this is okay. If you have Libby on another device, you should simply copy your card across. We're going to assume that the person doing this has never logged into Libby before. So we're going to go with the second option where it says, otherwise you can look up your library by name or location. And just under that, I'll search for a library. So I'm going to tap, I'll search for a library. And here you can put in the library name, the city or the zip code. For our library, which has a really long name, the Southeast Bend County Library, a member of the Southern Tier Library System, which is almost as long. Those are both long names, so I would recommend you tap the search box and then type in the zip code, which for Corning is 14830, and tap search. And sometimes it'll come up really fast, which that did. Other times it may take a moment. But it says Southern Tier Library System, Southeast Bend County Library. That's the one we want. So we're going to tap that. And once you've tapped that, it's going to think about it for a moment, swirl around, and it will remember that you've selected the Southern Tier Library System Digital Catalog. So it's going to think about it for a moment and come up and ask us if we have a library card. Now, if you do have a library card, you would tap Enter Library Account Details and enter your library card and your PIN. And if you don't know what your PIN is, again, contact contact us and let us know. You can send an email to us at the end of this presentation. It does have that information, but you can send an email to diglit, D-I-G-L-I-T, at S-T-L-S dot org, and we'll help you out with that. Because I don't want to show my library card number to everyone in the universe, instead of tapping Enter Library Account Details, I'm going to tap Skip This Step, which is going to take us right to the digital catalog. And if you've accidentally done that, no worries, because all you have to do is tap on an item you're interested in and tap Borrow, and you'll be prompted to enter your library card and PIN. So in the first collection here, and if we scroll down, there are a number of collections. But at the first collection at the top, it says Grit. It's an audiobook. If the collection is called All the Zoom Meetings. If I tap on the title, it will show me that there's 112 books and 44 audiobooks in this collection. And to borrow the first one, which comes up and it says The Power of Habit, I'm going to tap Borrow. Now, if I were something that were checked out, it would say Place a Hold or Request, but I'm going to tap Borrow. 
And at this point, again, it would tell me that I need to enter my library card number. But you enter that information, and then the audiobook or ebook will download to the app. And then you just go back to your home screen and look for the Libby app and open it to, to read or listen to whatever audiobook you've got. Hang on just a second, and I'll show you that. And once you log in with your library card number, it says, OK, you're signed in. Here's your library card. So I put in my library card number in my PIN. And then you tap Next underneath the linked library card. And it says Borrow. In the future, it will just say Borrow because it will remember your card credentials. And you'll notice the little circle to the left of the audiobook cover. There's a line going around it. It's downloading the audiobook. Ebooks download really fast, usually. Audiobooks take a minute more. So that's going around and going around, and it'll be done in a moment. I can go to Shelf, and that shows me what I've got checked out. And at this point, if I wanted to play this, I would just tap Open Audiobook. It comes up, and I tap the arrowhead pointing to the right. Random House Audio present. And at that point, I'm going to stop it because the material is under copyright, but you get the idea. So that is the tech tip of the week. That's it for this week. I'll be back next week with another Library Connections video. Happy reading!